Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Professor Sides, and this course is Principles of Macroeconomics. This is Chapter 11, Measuring the Cost of Living. In Chapter 10, we talk about GDP, gross domestic product, which is an indicator of an economy's health. In this short chapter, we look at another economic indicator or measurement, the cost of living. In order to measure the cost of living, how much does it cost to live in an economy, we call that measurement, um, we use a measurement called CPI or Consumer Price Index. The CPI is measured by a government agency, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. This indicator, the CPI, is um, an indicator that is done monthly, quarterly, annually. And there are five steps that we use in order to calculate um, this economic indicator. The first step is to fix the basket. And the basket is the consumer's basket. It is the goods and services that a typical customer, a typical consumer, excuse me, will buy at any given point in the in the course of a year. So first we have to determine what they're going to buy, what the consumers are going to buy. That's called fixing the basket. The second step is to find the prices. So now that we know what a typical consumer will buy or a typical household will buy, then we need to look at how much those goods or services, those mostly goods, how much does it how much do those goods cost? Now when the Bureau of Labor and Statistics do these calculations, they do them regionally because the cost of, let's say, a pair of jeans will cost differently in, differently in New York City than it will in Jackson, Tennessee. And so we, uh, we make these, when we find the prices, we're doing it on a regional basis. The third step is to compute the basket cost, and basically you're taking the price of the good times quantity of the good and you have the basket cost how much the how much what is the cost of those items in the basket the fourth step is to choose a base year and compute the index and then the fifth step is to uh, compute the inflation rate we're going to go through each one of these steps on how to compute the CPI the first three steps are directly related to calculating the CPI. Steps four and five help us to understand um, inflation rate, and we use um, steps four and five to do comparative analysis so that we can see overall how much, uh, how the change, what is the change in the cost of living. Um, perfect prime example, anecdotally. Um, when you hear your parents or your grandparents say, I remember when a loaf of bread cost, or I remember when, um, you know, get, prices are still so high, food is so high. Um, we use CPI to scientifically, mathematically calculate, well, did it, are the prices rising, are the prices getting higher, and if so, by how much? Now, let's look at our example of how to calculate CPI. First, the first step, remember, is to fix the basket, which means to determine what our goods and services are that we're going to, that a typical, typical consumer will buy. So in this particular instance, for this economy, the basket is pizza, and um, lattes. The basket includes pizzas and lattes. And we also know that for this particular year, there's four pizzas bought and 10 lattes um, bought and sold. So in, if we're looking at the year 2010, the price of a pizza was $10. The price of a latte was $2. So since we have four pizzas, we would take step, um, the, step one is fix the basket that's four pizzas, 10 lattes. Step two, find the prices. For 2010, the price of a pizza is $10 um, and the price of a latte is $2, so that's step two. Then step three is to compute the basket. So we would take $10, the price of the pizza, times four pizzas, 
and then we would add to it two dollars the price of the latte times 10 um, lattes so in the year 2010 uh, the cost of our basket step three is sixty dollars and we would do the same thing for 2011 the price of a pizza is now eleven dollars and the price of a latte is 50 cents we go through the same calculations and we see that the price um, that the uh, CPI rose 60 um, to sixty nine dollars and then 2012 the price went up to twelve dollars price of um, the price of the latte went up three dollars and our basket went up from $69 to $78. So using our, um, and then, so we have, this is the CPI. So you would hear on the news, uh, GDP for this quarter or GDP for the year was, and then right after that, they would say CPI or consumer confidence. And then they would um, tell you, um, give you another figure. And so that way you would know what the CPI is. Now, what good is CPI if we can't use it to compare? <clears throat> and as we did with GDP, when we did uh, real GDP versus nominal GDP, now we're going to calculate, now that we've calculated the CPI, we need to um, take this information and analyze it so that we can make some decisions. And so basically what we do, um, again, is uh, we're going to find the real CPI. And remember we said that current nominal CPI is the current price. That's these here, 60, 69, and 78. This is the nominal CPI. And then when we went when we're looking for the real CPI, we're going to compare it to a base year, which is um, step four, and compute the CPI index. And basically that was from the previous slide. Um, that is the cost of the basket in current year divided by the cost of the basket in the base year, and then we multiply that ratio by 100, and we now have our CPI index. So if we use um, the year 2010 as our base year, then we would have 100 times the ratio 60 divided by 60, because remember the cost of the current, of the basket in current year, divided by the cost of the basket in the base year, is the same because 2010 is, is the base year. So then we have 100 times one, and that's 100. And then we do the same for 2011 and 2012, but we use 2010 prices. So then we would have 10 times four plus two times 10. And um, what we would end up getting is um, 69. Um, when we did the 10 times four times plus two times 10, that was 60. And then, so that was the base year. And then we have the current year, or the nominal uh, CPI, which is 69. So we take 69 divided by 60. That ratio, we take that ratio, multiply it by 100, and we get 115. And then we take the 78 divided by 60, multiply it by 100, and we get 130. Now, this is the CPI index. And basically, to interpret the CPI index, what we're saying is we see 100. We know um, when the CPI index is 100, that year represents base year. And then um, what we look at is we look at the fact that now it's 115. So that means that the CPI is indeed, in real terms, the CPI for 2011 is higher than 2010. And since we have 130, then we can say that the CPI, um, since the index is 130, we can say that it rose even more in 2012. And that's how we would interpret the CPI index. Now we calculate the inflation rate. Remember, infl from macroeconomics, inflation means rising prices. And when anytime you put the rate, then it is a percentage or a percentage change. And so we look at our index and remember 2011 in real terms, um, our 2011 CPI index is 115 and our 2010 base year is 100. So there is a 15% increase. That means that 15% increase is our inflation rate. So to interpret, we would say 
that the inflation rate from 2011 to 2010 is 15%. It rose by 15%. And then from 2012 to 2013, inflation the inflation rate is at 13%. It rose by 13%. This concludes this segment of the lecture for CPI. Um, remember, CPI is, is measured by the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. It is a five-step calculation, and we use it to calculate not only the CPI index, but also the inflation rate for comparative reasons. I look forward to speaking to you with our next segment of this lecture. Have a good day.